We're actually doing, because it is our 75th anniversary, we're doing a little celebration this year. We're actually doing a throwback. Uh, think about 75 years ago, everything was black and white. But we're also doing a salute to Ansel Adams. So why black and white? Every year I use the photography competition or the photography salon as a way to challenge photographers to increase their photographic skills. Color is, all, is a little bit of a crutch. Everybody gets excited about the pretty colors, the pretty blues, the pretty reds, or whatever it may be. But when you strip away all the color, what you're left with is lighting, creativity, composition, the tonal ranges of the scene. So the viewer, not only the photographer, but also the viewer, starts to then focus more on what's happening within the image as opposed to just hitting the highlights, the, you know, the pretty colors. Yeah, Ansel Adams is, he's not the father of photography, but he pretty much is for this generation. I guess because all the photographers, they all have this burning desire to be better at photography. And Ansel Adams, he was driven to create the best image that he could. And all of us as photographers, every time a photographer goes out, there's always this burning desire, I guess, to create another image that's even better than the last one they just took. And how I've tied that in with what we're doing today is we have a category that's called My Ansel Adams. Every year we have all our regular classes, people, places, things, plants, and animals. But every year I have one category called the theme category that changes. So what they're supposed to be doing is submitting their best body of work, their lifetime work, to think back to every photo that they have ever taken in their life. Every photographer has their eight or 10, or maybe it's top 20 photos they think are just their lifetime best achievement. And if you think about it, they're gonna compete against over a thousand other photographers' lifetime best work. I had always admired winter photos in Yosemite National Park. And so I was determined uh, several years ago to uh, finish that in my bucket list. And so a friend and I decided we would just go to Yosemite in February and stay two weeks and hope that we got a variety of weather while we were there. You know, I always come back to uh, what Charlie Starnes always says is that, uh, you know, it needs to have that dang factor because it must give the viewer that feeling that, dang, I wish I'd have shot that. Uh, it really has to be something outstanding. Well, this photo here I, I took up in Northeast Iowa. Um, and uh, came across the top of a big hill and uh, turned around and, and just uh, saw a beautiful uh, farm um, with a lot of nice clouds and good textures and, and thought it'd make an interesting photo. You just never know what you're gonna come across. My dad works at a co-op and so it was harvest and we went to take pictures to see if we could get anything and I took a picture of the co-op. The photo that I shot was um, of my neighbor, Savannah. She was three at the time, and um, I just caught her off, off the side. It's different, like, you have to look for different angles or a different perspective, and it just can't be normal. What is it that inspires each one of the photographers to get out an hour before sunrise and stay out an hour after sunrise and shoot and, and rain and snow and sleep. What is it that gets you outdoors and what is, it, what is it that captures your mind about photography? Hopefully we're gonna be able to see that this year is each photographer is gonna submit their inspiration and their best body of work.